Uh, okay, it's a bit improvised, but we are quite a few here. We are users of uh, Google Engine, which is an awesome and mighty licensed game engine, but quite uh, not so well known. So far, most people are still using Unity, even though you can do exactly the same things with an open source engine. So we wanted just to make a very small presentation and show a couple open source games, then just show quickly the editor, what you can do with it. Uh, well, just five minutes, I can make a crash course. And then also show that there are actually some commercial games already made with Google Engine. So just some history. Um, it was open source two years ago, in February 2014. Previously, it had been developed uh, as a proprietary engine uh, by two Argentinian developers. And they used it for some games, but was not so successful. Even though the engine was pretty good. And so they decided, they quite liked open source, and they decided, well, we just go with it, and it's really no strings attached, so it's um, permissively licensed so that everyone can do games, monthly games too, uh, with it. And now it's really being built by a huge community. Uh, we just passed uh, 3,000 commits a few days ago, plus uh, the lead number of forks, 1,337. So it's quite a uh, growing community. Um, so I want to show you Minilands, which is arguably, I think, the first um, GPL game uh, developed with Godot. It was developed by the two cool guys here. <laughs> so it's a puzzle platformer about a cute robot uh, that comes in a post-apocalyptic Earth. Uh, so there are no humans anymore, and uh, the aliens that uh, designed it forgot that there is gravity on Earth. So it can jump. Uh, it has to make its way and clean up all the radioactive stuff and uh, collect some flowers uh, without being able to jump. So that's the tutorial. It's quite simple, it just uses some SVG graphics and um, relatively basic, but it already gives a nice feel of what can be easily achieved with the engine. So yeah, that's what the wrong choice, because you can jump, so start on the right, and then you can catch the flowers. So that was a 2D game uh, made with Godot, and there are also some uh, 3D games too. Uh, so this one was uh, a quick attempt, just one week of development by a uh, beginner developer. But he wanted to re uh, implement the design uh, or the concept of Neverball or similar games. Uh, but using Godot just to test a bit uh, the 3D. And actually, so you can see the grid map he uses for the level is pretty simple. But you are already have nice reflection on the walls and it was quite easy to set up because you have all the physics engine inside. The level is quite hard. Uh, and it's great because you have an editor, so you can just design your level in the editor, place the cards where you need them, use tiles uh, or 3D tiles or build map. Nice! It's also a GPL game, so available on GitHub. <laughs> okay, and now we wanted to show you quickly uh, the interface of the editor, uh, just to show that it's relatively easy to develop games with it and to customize them. Uh, you can really well, you need some time to learn how to use the engine, of course, but then you can, in a few hours, have a working prototype of the gameplay if it's a simple game. And then you just need, of course, time to make assets and stuff like that, and uh, make the gameplay more interesting. But we'll show you um, a small project we are working uh, together, so with the two guys from Minilens, myself, and um, a couple other guys. Uh, you're also joining us somehow. 
we are trying to bring in. We have a small commu alternative community in Dodo, which is called CoBJ, where we focus on making uh, open source games. So this one was the idea to make a simple tower defense game uh, because uh, it's easy to do, so we wanted to have something that works uh, quickly. And actually, Dodo uses a node-based uh, system, so everything is nodes, and you can just design scenes uh, with by concatenating uh, and putting nodes together with parent-children relationships. And then the child will always follow its parents uh, in the space or um, be uh, affected by its properties. And each node extends another node, so it's built quite gradually. You have very simple nodes like Node and Node2D, which are used to make respectively 3D games and 3D games. And um, then you build upon that uh, to add more properties to each node so that it can play sound, so that it can be animated, so that it can have a frame, a texture, stuff like that. Uh, maybe you can show um, one of the character scenes, uh, the one of the monsters, who one of the monster scenes. It's quite friendly to version control systems too, especially since uh, the new version, which is uh, 2.0 uh, beta. It's bound to be released in a couple of weeks. And there is a fully text-based uh, system to save all the information. Uh, quite human readable. We worked a bit on it so that uh, it doesn't change a lot every time you make a change and you want to push it to Git and you have 500 lines of useless uh, things moving around. So uh, it was quite streamlined. Uh, yeah. So. <coughs> Yeah, the animation was at the wrong uh, keyframe, so I'm not sure. So that's just a simple enemy in this game, a bat. And actually, it uses a pretty interesting system. I won't can show, talk to you about all features, but this one is new and quite nice. Um, which is called scene inheritance. So you can code a base scene for the enemy type. So it will have all the properties that an enemy in this game needs to have. So it has, I uh, don't know if you can see well, but it has a collision shape. Uh, but the first node is an area 2D, so it's uh, yeah, a 2D area which can detect collisions and react upon it, send signals when it meets other uh, objects. Then it has a collision shape to define the area where the collisions should happen. <laughs> it has a sprite uh, to, for the texture, a sample player 2D which will co uh, play a sample or some, several samples uh, based on the position of the node that you don't hear all enemies shrieking at you when you are walking at, uh, looking at one. Movement animation, effect animation, so we have two animations so that it can play at the same time, uh, different kind of animation. The effect is, for example, if it's poison, it will start modulate its color to become a bit greenish, and then you can see, oh, it's poison. Then the timer. And the cool thing with this scene in Returns is that once you've built this round scene, you can create a scene that inherits on it, and then you can customize this other scene, but it will keep the parenting to this other one. So you will only keep track of the changes. For example, this bat, um, we don't see the, we don't see the full editor right now. Uh, it's too small, I guess, the resolution. <coughs> Bad. Yeah, anyway, so it has properties, and for example, uh, you can add new nodes to add more properties. So if I want to add, uh, let's say, a label, I put a label here, and I can't edit it because I don't have the full editor, so that kind of defeats the purpose of showing it, so I won't do that. Okay, I'll just do something simple. I add... Um, the checkbox on top. I save. Now I run my game, and of course now all bats will have a checkbox uh, on their head, and I can click the checkbox. <laughs> 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 you are a bit hard to click, but okay. Now I want to kill those bats which are checked. I can make a script that will uh, iterate over all bats, and those that have a check checkbox, ah, I kill them. 
So it's pretty easy to actually design. Uh, well, nobody will use a checkbox in the game, but <laughs> here I can place my towers. And it's the same towers use the same scene inheritance uh, principle. So it's quite several ab abstraction levels so that there are some basic functionments and how they can locate enemies, prioritize them, stuff like that. And here you can see this one is just sending rays, while this one is sending fireballs, which are uh, moving and might have some delay. So they use different scripts to call all that. Uh, yeah, so that's a, for a quick overview and just show that there are also uh, some it's quite new as an engine um, since it's only been really known to the public for two years, but there are already some cool uh, commercial projects. This one is called Jetpacker and was designed by, uh, actually by the studio who developed the engine. And it was never released because um, the Nagodo is um, supported by an open source foundation and Actually, the game studio who was behind it at the beginning stopped making games. Um, they just moved on to something else, but it's still the same group as working for the Open Source Foundation. So it was never released, but small teaser, it might become open source uh, if um, the original developer gets the agreement from the artists. Yeah, you can maybe show um, yeah, the other one. Another one, which is Steam Quest, uh, currently uh, also in development. So to show that you can act do actual 3D games, uh, it's not a, only a 2D game engine, and uh, which has a nice steampunk uh, atmosphere. It's pretty cool because the Godot community is quite tight together, so we just work with the guy who is making this to improve the engine. Everyone is doing code review and submitting patches. So it's a nice environment to work both on the game and directly on the engine. There's also Sergio here, I just see, who makes quite nice games too. Also open source. So yeah, that's about it. Then just skip to Godman Dunsa and then we'll be done. Do you have it up front? Uh, Godman Dunsa? <laughs> This one is a demo of a commercial game also made by the creators on the engine. And this one is going to be commercialized. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's released next uh, month, I think. So it's an adventure game. Um, Point and click. So it supports loading videos and doing some funky animations. So basically, it's an engine you can do whatever you want. You just need to put some time into it, of course. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show in first game that there is a very good and easy to use open source engine to make games. Uh, both in 2D and 3D. And that's it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. What language are you using for the scripting? Yes. Um, the language used for the scripting is a custom language uh, called GDScript. So it's custom made for Godot. And uh, the syntax is heavily inspired from Python 3. Uh, so we all f always get the question, why go with a custom language? There are so many languages available. That's also the first reaction I had when I saw, ah, shit, it's a custom language. But actually, uh, it's quite well explained on the wiki, and I thought, we talked many times about it with the developer, and they really experimented a lot of stuff before choosing to develop their own custom language. Um, they used Lua, they used Squirrel. Um, they experimented with quite some stuff. Uh, they have some experience in the industry. It's actually been developed since 2000 something, 2003 or something like that. And it's only late, but they decided, okay, let's go with GDScript, and then they open and source uh, the whole thing. But yeah, it's really easy to learn and quite well integrated with the engine. 
Yes. Can it be extended with other languages? It can be uh, extended with other languages, yes. Um, actually, JavaScript is integrated as a module, so you can choose not to build it, and you can develop in C++, the engine is developed in C++, and you can develop your own module in C++ to add bindings for uh, your favorite language. And does that have uh, interaction with the uh, mobile uh, Yes, I, uh, uh, mobile platform, you mean? Yeah. yeah, I forgot to mention that. So it's uh, quite like Unity, you have exports for each platform, so you can export on all desktop platforms, uh, basically each platform that supports the X server, so Linux, IQ, and whatever, um, Mac OS, Windows, then there are mobile platforms, uh, so Android, iPhone, um, uh, Windows Phone too. Uh, even though I think nobody uses Windows Phones, but it exists. <laughs> so yeah, here you see the exports which are currently installed uh, and configured. Uh, so there's BlackBerry 10, but I don't think anybody uses that anymore. <laughs> HTML5 too. Um, so yeah, and more ports can be added. There are also some ports which are not open source because they are for consoles and they are uh, NDA so that you are not allowed to share their code. So the developers of the engine have the code, and if people are licensed for this console, they can get in contact and get the code for the specific platform. I've seen uh, SteamOS, so you can also build uh, games to be used on, uh, on SteamOS. Yes, well, SteamOS is basically a Debian derivative, so as long as it will use uh, X11, uh, it can run. There is yet no support for Wayland, but it will come eventually. Yes? Can you export from Blender? You are Blender? Uh, yes, um, there is uh, actually a custom exporter, uh, which is called Beta, Co Beta Colada Exporter, because um, the creator of the engine thinks that the default exporter sucks. So he has, um, you don't have it installed, I guess. So it exports in Colada, but in a way which is more compatible with what Dodo expects. Uh, yes, actually, um, so Juan Ligetsky, who is the main developer, just bumped uh, Blender, I think, recently, tried to get his work integrated because, from his opinion, I can judge, I don't know, but he thinks his exporter implements a lot better than it's long so yeah, to use Blender with Godo, we usually recommend to use this better Colada exporter. Yes? Uh, do you have anything about, uh, about VR? Virtual reality? Sorry? Virtual yeah, yeah. reality. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Goggles and, uh, and virtual reality stuff are not yet used, uh, but I think everything's possible as long as, uh, for example, uh, you want to contribute and add a module into Godot okay. uh, in order to make it work with virtual reality devices. So, uh, I don't see uh, any blocking points. Yeah, I think it's not there natively, but uh, yeah, it can be added. Like, you can really add many stuff as modules. Uh, it's really well separated what what is the OS part, what is the virtual visual server part, the audio server. Everything is quite uh, split. So you can easily make modules that interact with each component. <laughs> Are there any plans for Wayland support? For? Sorry? Wayland support. Wayland support? Uh, not concrete plans, but it will come. Uh, the, yeah, it's not on the agenda right now, uh, but as soon as people ca start coming and saying I would like to export to Wayland, yeah. then yeah. it will be done. Okay. I think we should probably stop there. Yes. Thank you so much.